Hello and welcome everyone to my channel Core with Ease by Varsha. So as I made a post recently that on problem solving we are going to use Hacker Rank three months preparation kit. So which is divided into like week wise there are around 104 questions divided into 13 weeks. So I'm going to pick up questions from here at random and then we are going to start solving it. So today's question that I've selected is sparse arrays. So let's take a look at the problem statement. There is a collection of input strings and a collection of query string. For each query string, you have to determine how many times it occurs in the list of input string and then return an array of the result. So here we have the function definition. We have to return a list of integer. We are given two lists of string. So first is the strings list, which is having a, b, a, b and a, b, c and queries is having a, b, a, b, c and b, c. So what we have to see is for each query string, that is for each string in the queries array, we have to determine how many times that string has occurred in the list of the first uh, string array. Like AB has occurred twice. So when the array we, which we have to return, that we have to populate like this, two. Two because it occurred twice. If ABC, we see it has occurred only once in this. So we have returned, we have to return one. And similarly, BC has not occurred at all. So we are going to just return zero. We don't have to return, it's, uh, it's just that we have to keep on adding to our output list. Okay, so with that, let's start doing the code for this. So I think since we have to keep a track of the occurrences of each of the strings, so hash maps come to the mind because there's a key and value pair over there. So we can make sure that the strings that we are finding in the first array, we can keep a track of every string like AB is the key and the value can be two because AB has occurred twice. So that kind of tracking we can do. And second time we can run the loop in the queries array and then we can find out like if the hash map contains that particular key if ab is contained in our hash map return the value of that and put it in our list okay so let's start so let's write the code for this so first let's have our map initialized so we will use a hash map uh, which is going to be a map of character so it will be a map of string and integer and then we can start a user for loop to traverse through the first list so int i equal to zero i less than strings so here we are not going to use length it's a list so we are going to use size and then i plus plus so now we are going to just simply put it into our uh, map that map one dot put what we are going to put we are going to put the the first the string which is there in our array so strings not caret this will be get because you're dealing with list and not with arrays uh, at ith position, get me the string at ith position. And what is going to be the value over here? So the value over here is going to be whatever the existing value is there plus one. So we use this method called get or default. As you can see, it takes in the key and the default value. So what is going to be key over here? The key is going to be this one. So I can just put this inside of a variable so that I don't have to call it twice. And then I will write it like key okay and the default value is going to be zero now the trick over here is of course it's going to be zero but we want to increment it by one right now once we are done with this so we are done with inserting values into our hash map so another for loop we have to add uh, we also have to print out the output string i mean the output uh, list just have to initialize this to a array list Now, what we will do is we will just traverse once again. Now, this time we are going to traverse through queries list. Right. So, within this, what we are going to check if map one dot contains key. What is the key over here? Again, let me define the key over here. The key will be queries dot get i. Okay. So if it contains the key, it contains key, then you just have to return whatever the value it is. And then you have to put it in the appropriate location at the output list, output dot add. At what location you want to add so that you have to specify. So we are going to say that we want to add to the location of i wherever it is. And then we are going to just get the value. So map one dot get the key this will give me the value against that so that is what i'm adding over here and i'll keep on adding if it is not there actually i can do it like if it is uh, actually i can do like this instead of doing a check 
and say output dot add right get our default i can use because if it is not there it will anyway be zero like we can see bc is not there it will anyway be uh, zero so i can do get our default key comma whatever the default value is and just close this so that is how we are going to populate our output list with all the values and finally i have to return the output right so the map one is initialized output is initialized we first are going through the strings dot size get i okay, let's run this okay let's submit So, so now let's, okay, so what is the time and space complexity for this question? We are going through, okay, the size of, uh, size of strings is N and the size of queries array, we don't know. So assume the, okay, I think the size of queries is Q. So N plus Q because first for loop, we have to traverse through the length of the strings list that can be of size N, let's say, and queries is of size Q. So n times plus q, n plus q times, and the space complexity is dependent on the size of strings, so it will be order of n. So yeah, that is all about the space and time complexity. See you guys in the next video.